So if the angle between two vectors is greater than pi over 2, let's say if two vectors look like this, you see? Let's say you have vector A, vector B look like that, and the angle between them is greater than uh, pi over 2. The inverse sign can, cannot know if the angle is greater than pi over 2. It doesn't know it. Uh, it gives the answer as, uh, I believe it will give you the answer as minus pi over 2. I mean, it'll give, you the ans it'll give you the answer as a negative number, you know. So, uh, or actually, no, it might even give you the answer as a positive number. Yeah, as a matter of fact, look, when you're doing this, uh, uh, the inverse sign, look here. You have a positive number because you're taking the magnitude. You have a positive number, positive number here. So when you do the inverse sign using the cross product, your answers are limited to 0 to pi over 2. So this way, you're never going to know if the angle is greater than pi over 2, you see? It only is going to give you positive angles from 0 to pi over 2. So uh, what's the range of the inverse cosine? Range of inverse cosine is exactly what we want it to be, uh, 0 to pi. So the inverse cosine will tell you if the angle is less than 90 or greater than 90. You will immediately know it. Okay. So now let's go and find the angle here. So let's take the dot product between R and F. Uh, you have negative 2 times 6, 5 times negative 2, 3 times negative 1, divided by magnitude of R, which is 4 plus 25 plus uh, 9, and then magnitude of F, which is uh, 36 plus uh, 4 plus 1. Okay? So you do that, and that's going to give you what? Uh, let's do this here. Negative 12, negative 10 is negative 22, negative uh, 3, negative 25 over square root of uh, 38 times square root of 41. So negative 25 divided by <laughs> 38 times 41 to the power 0. 0.5. And an inverse cosine of that, 129.3 degrees, right? Now that proves exactly what I was saying, that the inverse cosine will know if the angle is greater than 90. So the picture of this looks something like this then. The ruler looks like this, pivoted about the left point. I'm assuming here, I'm drawing it as if the, the board here makes the plane uh, given by R and F, you see? So the ruler looks like that, and then this is R. And then the force is applied three-fifths of the way up. And the force, the angle between the force and the ruler is uh, greater than 129. So the picture could look either like this. Okay. Or it could look like this. Those are the two options. And we don't know which one it looks like unless the problem tells us. Okay, so the angle that he gave us is 129. What angle is that in this picture? When you find the angle between two vectors, what you're doing is you're finding the angle between the vectors if both of them start from the origin. You see, if I displace the vector f to the origin, 
And if I displace this vector f to the origin, this angle between r and f, this is r, and this is f, right? That angle is 129.3 degrees. So what you're doing when you're finding the angle between two vectors, any two vectors, you see you have here a, and you have here b. You're finding this angle. Or if it looks like this, you're finding this angle. But if A and B represent, like say, the radius and force, and let's say the A represents the uh, uh, ruler or something, and B represents the force I'm applying to the end of the ruler, then I have to draw the force like this, right? So you displace the vector B to over there. So the angle 129 is this angle. You see? And then this angle is going to be the supplementary angle to that, uh, 50.7. You see? So it could, the picture could look either like this one or this one. So this angle is going to be 129.3. And then this angle is going to be uh, 50.7. Let's say it looks like that one. And then the direction of the torque, as given by the right-hand rule, will be out of the board. Perhaps I should draw the torque. Let's do that way. I'll, I'll draw the torque right there, out of the board. You see? OK, now, now let's do part C. Part C asked, what is the torque? that this force exerts on the ruler. So the torque, now I do the cross product, right? R crossed into F. So I put a determinant, I, J, K. When you're taking the cross product between vectors, you take the determinant. And across the top, you expand along I, J, K unit vectors. And then R is negative 2, 5. 3, and then f is equal to 6, negative 2, negative 1. And you do a determinant, 3 by 3 determinant, and you expand along the top row, i hat, and then you cross out that row, cross out that uh, column, cross out that row, and then you do the determinant of whatever is left over. Then you go to the next one, you do negative, negative j, you cross out that row, cross out that, uh, cross out the second column, cross out the first row, so you're left with negative 2, 3, 6, negative 1, and then plus k, then you cross out the last column in the first row, so you're left with negative 2, 5, 6, negative 2. And then the torque is going to equal i hat times, and then to do the first determinant, 5 times uh, negative 1, which is uh, see this minus this, right? 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, minus negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, okay, minus j, and then again you do this minus this, so 2 minus uh, 18 plus k, and then negative 2 times 2, so that's going to be 4 minus 30. So the torque is going to equal, uh, it's going to be i hat, this one is uh, negative 16, so plus 16 j hat, and that one's going to be negative 26 k hat newton meters. Okay. Now there's a simple thing that you could do at this stage to check to see if you did the problem correctly. 